Welcome to a new episode of So French, a podcast about the twists and turns, intrigues and insights to all things French. Every two weeks we select the best, most interesting and fascinating of French news stories, all brought to you from our studio in the heart of Paris. My name is Sara Bertilsson. And my name is Stefan de Vries. And this week we continue our Brexit coverage. Of course, we talk about its implications for France and how one of the founding EU nations is coping with being dumped by the British neighbours. We'll also tell you which football fans will be rewarded with a medal by the city of Paris. And of course, Maud Descamps is here to bring you a fresh French word of the day. But first, it has been a week since the shock result of the referendum in Britain. European leaders and its public have been trying to figure out what will happen next. British politics is in a complete mess, but it is not much better here on the continent. So no one seems to know what needs to happen. Uh, Sarah, yeah, do you know what needs to happen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I do certainly not know what needs what what's going to happen. Um, it, it, it's quite interesting to see how, how, you know, this whole story has turned into, uh, uh, um, everything has been turned upside down. Everything that we thought we knew was going to happen didn't happen. Um, the, the leadership battle that we thought, was, well, if it is a Brexit vote, it will definitely be Boris Johnson. Well, he dropped out of the race. So, you know, it, 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 and it has implications for, of course, the rest of Europe is stunningly looking at the UK at the moment and just wondering what is going on. So from France, we are not seeing that many reactions at the moment, actually. No, we just see a couple of people who want, of course, a referendum as well, a Frexit, amongst them Marine Le Pen, but also on the extreme left side, there's Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Uh, he hopes to be a president next year, or at least he will a candidate. He also wants a referendum and to leave the European Union. And even some members of the Républicain, the Nicolas Sarkozy's party, they want to have a referendum. Uh, traditionally, they have been very pro-Europe. Um, so but what you see is, it, I mean, there too, is we don't really see the reaction that we were expecting. We, at least I thought that a Brexit vote would mean that uh, the Eurosceptics in France would be boosted and you know the the Frexit vote would be pushed pushed forward but we have seen there has been polls done this week and they show actually the opposite yeah 61 percent of the French are actually uh, would vote uh, to stay in the European if there would be a European um, a referendum on the European Union um, and even uh, more people than last week are in favor of more integration, plus 11 points. So that's, you know, a lot of people. So nothing is really going as you thought it would go. So it's a very strange situation. So Marine Le Pen was very quick to um, react to the, the result. Already an hour after the result, she tweeted that it was a victory for liberty. But it took much longer for the president, François Hollande, to react. It took him hours and hours. And what he basically said is that uh, Britain should leave as quickly as possible yeah well then quickly as possible what is how quickly is quickly that is exactly. the question that now is being asked uh, this was also what was agreed with the other European leaders that they do think that UK should leave as quickly as possible we will not know until September uh, sort of what the time agenda could be um, but of course this raises a lot of questions about what I mean now this will be France and Germany leading Europe. Uh, of course, there's a couple has, who has had troubles in the past, uh, not always agreeing uh, on a lot of things, in, migra in my immigration for one thing, uh, economy, second, um, terrorism, uh, third. Uh, so issues that they've had with each other, but now they're going to have to agree on these two things if they're, if they're going to lead Europe. Um, and the question, of course, being, uh, where does France stand in this European project. What is the vision uh, of Europe for France? Well, that is, of course, the big question. Uh, let's have a closer look at this issue. We're joined now on the phone by Yves Bertoncini. He's the director of the Jacques Delors Institute, a think tank on European affairs here in Paris. Welcome, Yves. Um, yeah, tell us, the responsibility for what should happen now is resting on the shoulders of Germany and France. Uh, we have heard Merkel, but what are France's ideas for the EU right now? Well, I believe you're right to say that uh, the, the funding countries at large, and most specifically France and Germany, are facing huge responsibilities to, to design the, uh, Europe without the UK. Uh, I believe that France, and François Hollande in particular, will be tempted to insist on... Uh, 
uh, collective security issues on the fact that, well, of course, there is something to do with the, the, the UK to, 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 to have a successful divorce, if I may say. But what is important, even more important today, is to look at the neighborhood of the EU, to look at the world, to see that there are many threats around us and that there is need to go further uh, in a uh, uh, in more common approach because, as Cameron has said, we are stronger together. That's the irony of, uh, of its heritage, I would say, as regards Europe. And then France will insist even more in this direction. Of course, France would be tempted to go further uh, as regards the monetary union, the economic and monetary union, but uh, it's rather a dead end on the short run because France is in a weak situation. Uh, uh, economically, socially, budgetary. Whereas if you look at the a collective security front, meaning a terrorist threat, for example, the instability of the neighborhood, uh, France is in the front line as regards uh, the fight against terrorist threat. And there can be a convergence with Germany more easily, because Germany is rather the front line as regards the refugees crisis. Then, yes, I see this as a, as a probable um, outcome uh, after a kind of uh, shock, you know, emotional shock, political shock of the Brexit. And when I hear French politicians talking about more integration and social and fiscal harmonization, I always have the impression that they mean actually a more French Europe. But as soon as you tell them that more integration would actually mean a more European France, then suddenly they seem to be very less enthusiastic. Um, do you think there's really a French will to create a more uh, European Europe? Well, I believe you're perfectly right in uh, mentioning this so-called fiscal and social harmonization. Basically, I think it's probably needed, yes, but it shows something. It shows that the Treaty of Rome uh, uh, was not a French treaty. Actually, the French vision of Europe is more, polit more politics, uh, more defense, a uh, power, I would say. Europe has a power. And if you look back on, in history, uh, the French w w pushed for the European coal and steel community to, to, to interrupt wars between us, and then right after for the European defense community. But, but, but they were contradictory because it's also the French who, who rejected the European defense community in the, in the 50s. And then happened the Benelux countries' uh, uh, um, inspiration, meaning an integration based on markets, uh, because that was the integration, the Benelux integration was based on uh, economic exchanges and market. And then the Treaty of Rome is probably rather a Benelux treaty than a French one. And there was no real acceptance of this, you know, common market and then single market, maybe ex with the exception of the Jacques Delors period, because it was a French, you know, Franco-European, if I may say, but no real acceptance of this uh, single market, or I would say an acceptance on the condition that there could be or should be more fiscal harmonization, more social harmonization. Well, the relationship between France and the UK has always been a very passionate and a very complicated one uh, for over a thousand years already, actually. Uh, how do you think will the relationship between the two change now the UK is going to leave? It's difficult to say, but uh, uh, I believe that, uh, yes, you're right, the French, well, uh, uh, you know, a mixed mixed perception and then mixed feelings as regard the perfid Albion, as we say in France, you know, kind of country where we have been fighting for so long. But, well, maybe uh, the French believe in their majority that it's better to have them out. Uh, they were not like us, you know, now we will be more united uh, in the continent and that, of course, it will have to be our... Our, if not our best friend, but our best neighbor. And maybe the fact that the, the Brits are out will make things easier because it will be clear that they are not like us, they are not with us on the same boats, but then more less, less anger vis-a-vis -vis the UK, you know, uh, suspected to block the boat, you know, to, 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 to have a, a, a big break where, where we have a, a small engine, you know, to, 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 for this boat. So, yes, maybe if the divorce, that is a condition, the divorce is a good one. I mean, if it doesn't take uh, 10 years' time, if the Brits are clear, if, uh, if the settlement of the divorce is correct, well, I, I, um, I may even imagine that the, the relations will be, will be a bit better than, than that, what they were, were uh, up until now.
Thank you, Yves. That was Yves Bertoncini, uh, director of the Jacques Delors Institute here in Paris. And it's time now for our almost traditional So French Word of the Week. Maud Decan is uh, joining us. Uh, bonjour, Maud. Hi, Stefan. So you were also inspired by the Brexit. What word have you picked this week? Yes, well, the, the French word of the day is actually a, a French expression, filet à l'anglaise. Uh, if I translate literally, it is to sneak out as an Englishman. Uh, and the actual English version of this expression is to take French leave. In the context of Brexit and of the Euro 2016, uh, I found quite interesting to, to look a bit further into the origin of this expression. Um, apparently, the English expression existed way before our version. Uh, to take French leave was, well, according to the Oxford Dictionary, an old habit in the royal court during the 17th century uh, when courtiers left the court quietly without anyone noticing um, as interrupting a ceremony was considered as a very impolite thing to do. The French expression, filet à l'anglaise, first appeared uh, according to the Petit Robert Dictionary a bit later in the 19th uh, century, but the origin uh, of the meaning of this expression isn't really clear. There are several uh, theories to explain it. Um, historians think that the, the rivalry between France and England explains the two expressions, the two versions of the expression. At the end of the 19th uh, century, the word anglisé meant uh, stealing, so this could be one explanation for this expression. And according to linguists, the French and the English expressions are equally used uh, in Europe today. And silently, she sneaks out of the studio. Merci, Maud Decan, et à bientôt. It's summer, fortunately, although the weather is not as good, but it's almost holiday season, even though the French tend to prefer August for their holidays. But it also means new laws coming into effect on the 1st of July. It's mostly boring stuff, but some of them are actually quite interesting, Sarah. Yes, from today, we're no longer allowed to use plastic bags, or at least for stores are not allowed to hand them out to the customers. So how am I going to carry my, my vegetables? Well, in your hands. No, oh. of course, there is a solution to all this. There will be, there is now paper bags uh, instead of the plastic ones. Um, the ones that are uh, subject to this ban are those, you know, the flimsy ones, the see-through things that um, quite often are handed out at checkout in the supermarkets or in the um, in pharmacies, for example. Uh, and uh, so, so not, the, not the, the more robust ones, big plastic bag, still allowed to use those, even though you have to pay for them. Okay, so the light weighted plastic bags? No more. No more. Nowhere? Uh, nowhere, no. <laughs> okay, and what's the reason? I can imagine. Uh, of the... course, I mean, well, the reason is, of course, for the environment. Uh, according to the French government, five billion plastic bags are handed out in supermarkets. 12 billion being used to package fruit and vegetables every year here in France. Of course, a majority of these end up not where they should be, but actually in the oceans where they destroy uh, the environment, uh, they disrupt ecosystems. Uh, so, of course, this is a major step to try to cut down on, um, uh, on plastics in general. Okay. So 12 billion... That's about uh, 200 bags a person a year in France. That's a lot. It's a lot. And it's much, much more. In, in Denmark, for example, I think you only have like 10 plastic bags or even less uh, per person. Uh, still less than Poland, uh, who is above uh, France in consumption of uh, plastic bags. So, But, you know, uh, a step forward uh, for the environment in France and in the, for the world in, in general. Yes, and uh, the 1st of July means more good news for the environment. Um, you will no longer hear this noise in Paris. Yeah, it means that cars built before 1997, so 20 years old, are from now on banned from Paris because the city wants to fight the heavy pollution. It's not 24 hours a day. They can still drive around at night and in the weekends, uh, but it's just the first step uh, to basically ban all polluting cars. Um, in 2020, 
Paris wants to ban cars older than eight years, um, unless, of course, these are electric cars, but the, 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 the gas using cars will be banned from the city center. Um, so that's, uh, that's another big step uh, to have some, uh, well, cleaner air in the city. Um, but no reform without protests here in France. Of course not. Protests. <laughs> protests, yes. <laughs> Um, angry, dirty, stinking car owners are blocking some roads in Paris uh, today because they think the measure limits their fundamental right of freedom of polluting, uh, pardon, uh, freedom of movement. Um, of course, they uh, care less about the freedom of respiration, uh, but that's another uh, detail. The Euro 2016 tournament is still going on, of course, here in France. And Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland fans, they will receive an award from the mayor of Paris because they have been exemplary sportsmen uh, during this tournament. Anne Hidalgo, the mayor, said that she will give the medal of the city of Paris to those supporters. Well, the Irish fans have been praised for the atmosphere they've helped to create in France. Uh, this medal, it's known as the Grand Vermeil. It's regarded as Paris' most prestigious honor, and it has been awarded to a variety of cultural and political figures in the past. The city's deputy mayor for sport and tourism even says that they're a model for all the supporters of the world. Wow. <laughs> Both these teams, they reached the knockout stages, but they exited the tournament last weekend. Uh, just after the match, Stefan went to speak to some of the Irish fans here in Paris, uh, and in spite of their loss, they were still laughing. Very disappointed? Yeah, we're very disappointed. We were uh, very happy to make it into in this particular match, but uh, it's always going to be tough against the people hosting the competition and against France, who are a very good team. Yeah, there, there's one silver lining. Uh, apparently the Irish are the, the most popular supporters of this tournament. How do you explain that? Yeah, it's true. I mean, we, 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 we come here to have a good time and uh, we have no uh, bad will towards anyone. We enjoy our time when we're in France and uh, we're just delighted to be here. So, yeah, we're very happy with the fact that we've, uh, we've shown that we, uh, we do a good job as supporters of our team. Oh, uh, we are. We're pretty disappointed, but um, you know, we got to give it to the French. They uh, they actually came back pretty strong. Um, we we got ahead, and uh, we believe, and we still believe. But uh, you know, uh, we love sharing the sharing the pub uh, with the French guys, and uh, it was a fantastic match. Yeah, there's one silver lining though. Uh, during this tournament, you have become uh, Europe's most favourite supporters, the Irish. How do you explain that? Uh, I think um, I think it's quite nice because um, I think we, we we try to give it our best. You know, we believe. Uh, that the game is never over until the referee blows the final whistle. I think as well the Irish people have uh, have a you know have a great time in Europe and we really enjoy the tournament. This is wonderful. So even now you're still laughing. We're still laughing. As you can see, my glare, my verre, elle est la moitié vide. So I need to fill it up again and uh, and enjoy the rest of the tournament. So uh, really happy to be here in Paris and uh, loving the tournament. But, uh, bravo à la France. It's not clear yet when this ceremony uh, will actually take place. Uh, but what do you think, Stefan? Are they worth this medal? Yeah, they were very, very nice, really. And of course, the tournament started with a lot of hooliganism of the English fans against the Russians. So it gives a very nice image of the football. And uh, when I spoke to them last weekend, even after they were kicked out, they were still very happy to be here. So I think the medal is really uh, deserved. <laughs> Well, that wraps up this episode of So French. You can follow us on Twitter. It's at So French News. And if you have any suggestions or questions, send us an email. Our address is sofrench at sofrench.news. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes or in SoundCloud. And you can also find us in the TuneIn Radio application. And you can share the podcast with your friends. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode of So French. We hope you'll join us then. Thanks for listening. Au revoir. Au revoir. Mm-hmm.